Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you how to make your very own elevator using prismatic constraints in Roblox Studio. I'll show you how to use prismatic constraints, what they are, how they work, and we'll also be doing a little bit of scripting for our elevator. So prismatic constraints are basically a constraint that allow your attachments to slide along an axis. They're super cool, super useful. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So in front of me, I have two parts, one of which is the platform for elevator, and the next is our little pole where our elevator will slide on. So the way we're going to make our elevator is by using prismatic constraints, of course. So I'm going to go to model, then create, then go to the drop down, select prismatic, and I'm going to start with my pole, and then go all the way over to my platform, and here is our prismatic constraint done. So you see the first thing we get is an alignment issue because both the attachments in our prismatic constraint have to be their x axis so their yellow axis they have to be aligned but their slider axis which in this case is like the y axis they do not have to be aligned so wherever they're pointing is where our prismatic constraint can slide and that's all a prismatic constraint does it allows your two attachments to slide along one axis, no rotation whatsoever, but, and they can't really move in other axes either. So let's go move this into position so the attachments are both in the same slot. So if I were to press play, you can see that the part falls, if I move it up, it does not move away from by like the central axis so i can move it away it just stays there so it's constrained to this one axis of the pole and that's exactly what you want with your prismatic constraint so just like a hinge constraint if you didn't see my video on that make sure to check it out a prismatic constraint has a few properties that you can change that allow it to do like different things and these look familiar you have limits you have actuator type and they're just both for what they are for the hinge constraint. So if I enable limits real quick, the limits start according to the attachment zero, I believe. Yep, that's the attachment zero. And they basically are just the amount of studs where the prismatic constraint can move. So right now the limits are lower limb zero, upper limb is five. And they're defined by these little like yellow things. If you don't see that, make sure to go to model, constraint, details, draw on top. And right now, if we were to play this, this won't move because limits are set accordingly. But for this elevator, I'm just going to set my lower limit to negative 10. Let's actually set it to negative 20. There we go. That's about good. And my upper limit to zero. So it won't be able to go above the upper limit and it'll stop the lower limit. So right now you can see it stops right there, which is exactly what we want. And you can also add some restitution so it bounces. I'm just going to do 0.5. Let's see how that works. You see it sort of bounces at the bottom. So you can change that to whatever you want. Now we have our actuator type. So in this case, we're going to use a servo. And a server will basically move our elevator platform to whatever position we define. So my target position right now, and this uses the same positioning system as our upper and lower limit. So right now you can see the current position, it's at zero. But we want to set our position, let's say, let's set it to negative 10. And you can see it's indicated by this little blue line right here. So we're going to have to give it a lot of max force and a lot of speed if it's going to actually hold up the weight of our little part. So let's see if that's enough. 
Yeah, it is enough. So there you go. It holds up the weight of our part, and it's positioned right there. So let me just turn on constraint detail so I can change it mid-game real quick. And I'm going to set the target position back to zero, and you can see it moves up. And the real beauty about prismatic constraints is unlike tweening, I can be like, okay, I can just tween this part up and down. This part, or this part is physically active so it can hit things your player will add weight to it so it'll struggle a little bit to lift it up and that's exactly what we want and there's also another actuator type you could change it to a motor but that's just for like constant movement with prismatic constraints you're honestly not going to use that that much i usually just use a servo so now we can actually script our elevator but before we do that we first have to make a little part with a click detector to detect when we want to go up or down a floor so i'm just gonna make a little part and we're going to make it neon red just so it's nice and flashy and this will you just have to click this to go up or down a floor this looks kind of ugly but we're not going for style here it doesn't really matter so i'm going to weld the part and the platform together, and this will be our, like, our little click part. I'm going to add a click detector to this part. Click detector. There we go. And we're just going to name it, this part, the clicker, let's say. And right now would be a good time to highlight all of the parts in our elevator. Control G, create a model, and this will be our elevator model. There we go. So let's first make sure that our elevator can support the added weight of our clicker. So right now our target position is negative 10. Let's just play this. There you go, look at that. It's absolutely perfect. It goes to the exact spot. Doesn't move any more, any less. That's exactly what we want. Right now I'm going to set the target position to negative 20 at the very bottom. And I'm going to move the whole platform plus the clicker down there so let's just move this down just so the elevator starts at the very bottom because you wouldn't want it starting at the top so let's just verify this that this works there we go it goes to the target position that's exactly what we want so i'm going to go create a script in my elevator let me zoom in a little bit and we're first going to define our clicker click detector I should say and this will be equal to script dot parent dot clicker not class name dot clicker dot click detector there we go and now we just need our prismatic constraint so I'm just gonna abbreviate this as PC and this will be script dot parent dot shaft I spelled that horribly wrong dot prismatic constraint there we go. So we have our click detector and our PC. I'm going to make a Boolean variable. This will be up. Up will be equal to false. So this elevator is going to be simple. It's only going to have two fours up and down. And so I can just set it as a Boolean. You could obviously make this a number. That's the beauty of the servo because you could set the target position to an increment of like 10. So target position negative 20, target position negative 10, and then target position zero. You can just do that, do whatever you want, and your click detector will just like cycle through it. But for the sake of simplifying this video, we're just going to leave this as two floors, but it's still a pretty cool system. So up will be equal to false. Then we're going to set click detector dot mouse click, and this will be an event. We're going to connect a function to it. So this will fire whenever the player clicks on our part. And the first thing we'll want to do in this event is set up equal to not up. So this will set if up is false, up will be set to true. If up is true, then up will be set to false. And then all we need to do is just set the target position. So PC.target position will be equal to up and zero or negative 20. so this is another wacky sort of logic statement basically what this means is if up, if up is true we're setting the target position to zero which is at the very top but if up is false then we set it to negative 20 which is what it's at right now and 
By the way, if you are wondering why it's like negative 20 and like not positive 20 and like the bottom zero, it just depends on wherever your attachment zero is. So right now my attachment zero is at the very top of my pole. So anything below it is negative, anything above it is positive, and right on it is zero. But if we were to go in right now and test our elevator, let's hop on. We click this and you can see it brings us all the way to the top of our elevator. And unlike tweening or whatever, our character is pretty smooth. Sometimes we get bounced up, but it's pretty smooth when we go up and down and it's simulated pretty well. So I think that works great. And that's about it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on prismatic constraints. These constraints are super useful. You can use them for elevators. You can use them for a moving platform, a sliding door. And the real benefit of using these is the fact that physics work on them, unlike tweening. And you can also tween models a lot easier with this sort of thing. You don't need to tween them. You can just weld them all together like we did here. And overall, they're just really fun to play around with. But I encourage you guys to play around with it, fool around with these prismatic constraints, because the only way you're ever going to fully understand these constraints is just by using them and playing around with them. That's how I learned how to use all of these constraints. And they are a lot of fun. They are kind of confusing sometimes, but they're super powerful and very, very useful. But other than that, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Comment any qu questions or suggestions down below. I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.